I'm going to talk about the uh, the effects of the uh, the COVID-19 epidemic on the labor force and uh, especially on women. Now, my I, I should say this was the the topic that I originally said I was going to do, and I'm, I've changed it a bit. So it's how to ensure that women aren't disproportionately affected by changes in labor force due to COVID-19. So that's a, a long uh, title, but that was a topic. And I decided that, you know, really, uh, you know, there's a silver lining to every every cloud. So I wanted to turn it into something, something positive. So I went with how to take advantage of COVID-19 changes to increase your profits, right? So we want to uh, see if there's anything positive that we can get out of this. And it's really that uh, there are some opportunities out there because of changes in the labor market, uh, unfortunate changes in the labor market, but that it does, like uh, you know, like any crisis, lead to opportunities to uh, maybe take advantage of things that weren't available to you before. And in 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 this talk, I'm going to talk about how changes relative to women in the labor force uh, might be something you can uh, take advantage of. All right, so just generally economists, when they talk about the effects of recession on women, they usually talk about three different hypotheses, right? The first one of these is the one that I think is, has been dominant. It's a segmentation hypothesis, right? So as, as Luca mentioned, there were different effects of this recession on different industries. He had uh, data from uh, Germany, and this is always true in recessions, right? So because women are uh, predominant in some sectors and men are predominant in others, the different effects that you can have due to differences in employment by sectors and industry can mean that recessions will have different impacts on women than they do on, on men, All right? Another hypothesis that people uh, talk about, economists talk about is the substitution hypothesis, right? So during recessions, you know, firms are scrambling because it's a very difficult environment for their business. So they're cutting costs. And part of the cost cutting we found is that firms will, you know, seek lower cost labor, right? Uh, which often means hiring more women to replace men because on average women are, uh, are, are paid less than, than men. So uh, we do see one thing is, uh, women are entering and being hired in the work in during recessions because there's a, a, a turn to get lower cost labor. This is less uh, important than it has been in the uh, in the past, but I think in this current environment, it actually is going to become really important. And then there's an added worker effect, which again remains to be seen how important this will be. It's one spouse, and in the past, it's usually been the uh, uh, the wife enters the labor market because the other spouse, the husband, uh, loses uh, his job, right? So this is now uh, the, the, the gender balance in this statement isn't is what it used to be when this effect was first uh, uh, identified, but often you do see in, in recessions and downturns that women who weren't in the labor force will enter the labor force because uh, their, their husband had uh, lost his job. So the woman uh, will enter to try to get some more uh, income. So the first two, first one of these is really about the kind of negative effects. And the second and third are really how women might be entering the, the workforce. But in the current environment, the, the way to think about this, I think, is that, you know, the segmentation hypothesis is just really the dominant explanation about what's happening to women relative to men during this downturn. Uh, but numbers two and three, the substitution hypothesis and the added worker effect are really opportunities, right? They point to opportunities for employers to maybe take advantage or make the best of the situation that they face as the economies begin to, to open up and as businesses start to, uh, you know, to, you know, ramp up their, their activities over the next uh, few months, hopefully. All right, so what do I mean by all of this? Well, typically during recessions, uh, women are affected less than men in terms of employment, right? So in fact, in the US, they started calling uh, recessions uh, man sessions, 
right? Because they typically affect the employment of men more than women, right? Now, the reason for this is because of the segmentation hypothesis, because men are represented in uh, industries and sectors that are more uh, recession sensitive. So industries like manufacturing and construction in a typical recession, these are the things that take a hit. And because these sectors are much more uh, heavily, much more heavily are uh, where men are employed, then you see that, um, you know, men are going to lose, lose their jobs earlier and also uh, more dramatically than women. And on the other, other hand of this, although other sectors will be harmed too, there are some sectors that are more recession resilient. Uh, so healthcare and education over the past few recessions have in fact usually just kept rising, right? So employment in these sectors kept rising through even the great recession in the US. So healthcare just uh, kept expanding and uh, that is predominantly or the vast majority of healthcare workers are in the US are, are women. And also the education sector uh, disproportionately uh, employs women. So you can see typically then in a recession, if you look at the relative effects, you're typically going to get this man session where men are uh, on average affected more than women in terms of their employment. And then you add in the added worker effect and, uh, and the other effect, the, and you see that the substitution effect, and you see that maybe uh, uh, that you know, why women aren't as typically as affected as, as much as men. Now, this downturn obviously is very different from any other downturn we've ever seen, and certainly in terms of the effect of men relative to women, right? So this is unique in that the industries most affected are those that, are disp that employ a disproportionate number of females, right? So it's just the opposite of most uh, recessions. So in particular, retail trade, has taken a hit all over the world, uh, you know, and certainly in, in the U.S. These are U.S. categories I'm talking about. But you know, stores have been closed. Uh, you know, only different certain types of stores are allowed to open. But these types of uh, retailers, employers, have typically more women than men in, as their in their workforce. Hospitality and entertainment sectors. So this is restaurants uh, and other entertainment venues and hotels. These also have a predominantly, you know, typically will have more women than men being employed, right? And also taking a huge hit in terms of the, uh, the current uh, uh, slowdown or downturn. And personal services. So here it's things like, uh, you know, hair salons, right? So hair salons, uh, as an example, you know, just completely shut down here in the US. And it's actually been a big fight over trying to, uh, to open some of them. But again, mostly uh, or disproportionately, these are uh, sectors that have women in their employment. And oddly, uh, healthcare. I'm not sure if this is true elsewhere, but in the United States, the healthcare sector has taken a huge hit during a pandemic. That might seem counterintuitive, but uh, what has been banned effectively is that most other, other than non-emergencies, most procedures and doctor's visits and everything else in the health industry has been prohibited, right? So the, 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 the volume in hospitals is way, way down because they've been focusing just on uh, pand you know, coronavirus patients or on uh, emergencies, right? So doctors have laid off lots of people, hospitals have laid off thousands. So uh, this has really been a, a big factor in there being a lot of women who have lost their jobs because the healthcare sector is uh, dominated by uh, women relative to men. So you see that this, you know, recession that we're currently in really is the, the opposite of typical recessions. And it's not a man session at all. And I don't think there's a, a, a phrase that will fit, but uh, as nicely, but this is definitely a recession that uh, hits women more than men, right? So, okay. So this sounds pretty bad for women, which it is, but I wanted to put a, a positive spin on it. So this is really an opportunity for uh, especially small and medium sized uh, enterprises to maybe uh, rejig how they do, do business and to reconstitute their, their own labor force as they, as they recover. 
right? And something that will be happening in the long term in the U.S. is state and local governments are going to uh, be strapped for money and going to be more women uh, laid off or not becoming employed uh, uh, because of that. All right, so what are these, these opportunities for small and medium-sized enterprises? Well, uh, if you think about it, uh, all these women have been laid off. They're out of work. Uh, there are more experienced and skilled women available for hire. So if you are expanding, you're a business that's expanding, you're looking for opportunities to get uh, good employees or to replace employees who uh, aren't coming back for whatever reason, there are just a, a, a load of experienced and skilled women available for hire. Right now, uh, since we're, it, you're a biz, running a business, you might be interested in the bottom line. Women employees tend to be less expensive. Right, so this again is the substitution hypothesis, right? So women, uh, you can decrease your cost by hiring uh, women as you expand and maybe not rehiring uh, the same men or you can, uh, you know, maybe the men have moved on to greener pastures and you can kind of consider, well, maybe we can do things uh, more cheaply if we uh, fill what used to be a man's position with a, with a woman. And also uh, women tend to be undervalued relative to their productivity. Now, we can say that this is because of discrimination or a variety of reasons, but it's typically true that uh, women are bargains out in the labor market. I know I found when I've tried to hire uh, economists and uh, others who work in my office, uh, it's that the women who are available are uh, usually better on average than the men who are available, right? So if other people are discriminating or overlooking uh, productive women, then you have an opportunity. So and this is a tendency. So, well, it's not just that women are less expensive, but it's that they're less expensive, even though their productivity can be the same or higher. All right, so these are opportunities. You have, uh, you're recovering, maybe you've lost employees or you're expanding to take advantage of new opportunities. Uh, well, there are a lot of women out there who uh, are less expensive than men and might be undervalued. So you might want to focus on uh, on hiring women. So in, in the US, we call this uh, playing money ball, which is from baseball, where you find the undervalued types of workers and you try to expand in that direction and uh, put your efforts into that in order to increase your, your profits. Now, uh, I'm not an expert in uh, kind of management of uh, or human, human resources, but uh, I found that when I've tried to hire uh, and I've been at places that have been hiring, there were still questions that you had to ask. Are you ready to hire more women? So a lot of workplaces aren't ready to hire more women for a variety of reasons. One is that just the way you've set things up, and these are old stories, is that the workforce is not flex very flexible, right? The way you've set up your work, uh, you know, everything's nine to five, and you've not really taken advantage of women because, you know, they've looked for more flexibility than you've been willing to offer. But maybe you can examine, especially given the experience that you've, you've, you've had with uh, dealing with the, the current situation, that maybe there can be more flexibility, more work from home at different times. And maybe everyone doesn't have to be there at, at the same time. So again, maybe we've had an opportunity to see how different models work in terms of, of the workplace, because women on average are more interested in the work home balance. Uh, and you know, you have to ask yourself, are you being as flexible as you can towards that while still maintaining, you know, your, your productivity? And, you know, is it just like a mental thing that you have? You have a one size fits all mentality and, uh, you know, maybe that's been broken. I mean, we've really not been, uh, you, you won't be doing pretty well, very well in the current situation if you really have a one size fits all mentality. So you really have to think, well, can individual people become more productive if you allow them that flexibility? And then a uh, female friendly workplace. Is your workplace female friendly? Right, if you're really gonna take advantage of this, you have to have a uh, women who want to, uh, you have to have, have it so that women want to work for you. And a female friendly workplace, you know, maybe this physically, your physical space needs to change. I'm not sure about, about this much myself, but what I have found is uh, a female friendly workplace isn't just about the physical space, but it might even be more important is the attitudes of the existing workforce. I know that this is 2020 and we think that 
there's been a lot of changes and there have been a lot of changes, but there are still a lot of uh, men who work, young men and old men, who uh, still have uh, kind of outdated attitudes. And not just attitudes, even if they have kind of the right uh, notion in mind, uh, I've seen workplaces where we, it's, it's like a frat house, right? So it's the, the men, it's like they're still in their fraternity in college and they're, uh, they've extended that to the, work, to the workplace. And it's just not, not appropriate. And it's really a turnoff to a lot of employees and uh, particularly for, uh, for women. So if you really want to take advantage of the opportunities, right? So this horrible situation we're in, maybe it's an opportunity for you to reconsider how you uh, balance men and women in your workforce and take, you can take advantage of the fact that there are a lot of uh, skilled women who are undervalued by other employers and, uh, you know, move towards the future as we move, move out of this. And that's, that's the best way that you can personally do more for yourself and for, uh, for women is to, uh, you know, take advantage of what possibilities are, are there for you. So I'm not sure about the, the time on that, but that's it for, for me. And I managed to do it without a single chart. Uh, <laughs> and that's been years since I've been able to do that. Nice. Fabulous. Well, does anybody have any questions? And this is actually going to be another one of our topics. So Howard's laid out there a plethora of problem statements for you to look into um, for whichever team gets assigned that one that problem statement. So any questions from anyone? Well, oh. Just one consideration. Uh, it's Luca. Okay. Hi, Luca. Um, I think uh, probably is uh, uh, for the time you, you couldn't uh, highlight, but also it seems, it's now uh, still clear from the data, the increasing of uh, domestic violence that in, in some way um, can uh, um, uh, make even worse uh, the uh, situation uh, of uh, women and the uh, children uh, in, the, uh, in the lockdown. Hmm. Now that's an interesting point. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of things. A uh, uh, lot of things we're going to see coming out of the, the lockdown, the effects of the lockdown on a variety of factors. So it's not just the, you know, controlling the pandemic, but that pending people up in in homes is going to have uh, different effects within the families for sure. Yeah. Great. 